starting, I have my YouTube channel, um, and I've been growing it, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm just having trouble like producing new content all the time. I would, doc- I would, I would highly recommend documenting versus creating. Okay. When you get into ruts, yeah. just do a day in a life, or just something. But like when I do vlog type of content yeah. on my channel, my views are going a lot more down. Because then what? Uh, then like if I'm doing stuff on, because I have an audience of programmers. Yes. So when I'm doing stuff with coding content or something, those get a little bit more views. But but you're pandering to views instead of putting out content. That's true. If you're not inspired to do fucking coding content, you're not gonna put out anything that day. Right. I'd rather you film yourself drinking a cup of coffee and maybe talking about the story of why you started coding in the first place. That's true, yeah, because you know what the problem, big problem I'm having is that I'm kind of, I don't feel like really coding that much anymore because I'm focusing on running the business. Yeah, and talk I'm, about that. I'm not really related to the pe- when my I, audience When anymore. I first started doing business videos instead of wine videos, my, my views collapsed because my audience was wine people. Yeah. But then I just built it back up. You can't live your life predicated on how many views the video is gonna get on YouTube. It's because the biggest important thing for co- content producers to understand. Everybody's getting caught up in likes and subscribers right. instead of actually living their fucking life. In my mind, I'm running a business as well, so I'm trying to get the, so it's not just likes and subscribers, I'm trying to cultivate a community of developers who are then also purchasing our products. Well then so bring them, then you gotta bring them value. Right then every single thing that you should be putting out has nothing to do with likes or subscribers. Right. It should be like, what in the world is gonna help this developer? And you have to make that content with the expectation of them never buying your product. Right. Then you'll grow. People wanna give up. Like when you make a video and it gets two views, it feels shitty. But the reality is everybody started at two views. Mr. Beast got two views. That's how it starts. And so like I did videos in this store when YouTube first came out in 2006 for months and months and months and got no views. 80, 60, 40. But if you love the videos you're making and you're talking about shit that you're interested in, then you're just loving the making of the video and then the results will come a year or two later. So you do it because you wanna make the videos, not because you want the subscribers or the fame. If you want to crush it on YouTube, all the information is out there. Like go to Google, type in YouTube, click on the news, find out what the latest news is, type in like YouTube SEO, really hone in your titles and descriptions, do things that are timely, caption your videos because YouTube doesn't really care as much about the tags anymore like they used to. They do really care about your 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 actual captions and what's said in the video. Like if we're doing a video about boxing, I'm gonna mention Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao when I'm talking about a punching bag because I know that it's gonna be picked up in the captions and then hopefully that will be picked up in the suggested views if somebody's watching like a Manny Pacquiao video. So I would do that. Think about your timing. Try to find a like regular schedule. YouTube loves regular schedules. So he said something very important, right? Listen, he's, he said be timely, that means hack culture, right? You're talking about lifestyle, fitness, health, like like you gotta be smart about being aggressive when, you know, when Arnold Schwarzenegger's in the news, when something is happening in fitness, when when the uh, uh, you know competitions are on ESPN, World's Strongest Men, like be smart about what's going on in culture. You've maintained relevance for seven, eight years, which is quite difficult to do, especially in social media. You talk about practice and being close to your customer. You just spoke about uh, hustle and how you changed your definition of that word. How do you actually, what's the actual practice for you look like? What does that studying actually look like? Because on social media within that domain, it's so difficult with the barrage of information that's coming out of you, right? Like you're reading comments or you're talking to people on the street. How do you make the decision to say, hustle is not the right word to continue hitting the right message with my audience. So So with the hustle thing or where I'm at now, which is different than, the reason I'm gonna answer this twice is I'm about to give you advice, I'm about to give you insight to someone who has a large audience and I'm aware that most people don't. Today it's easy. You know, when I said tonight I'll spend an hour, I will. Now, I may go into trending topics and read a trillion different like news outlets and look at my stream and see if there's anything happening or I might just spend, which happens way more often, the entire hour reading all my DMs. And in the DMs is where I got the, in, by the way, I had no feelings towards eighth place trophies nine years ago. I really was indifferent, genuinely. I didn't think, like I just didn't think it was a big deal until I read a 
million comments from 22 and 23 and 24 year olds and got more insight to why so many people are so scared to fail and started to backtrack and have conversations. So today, my friend, to answer your question, it's because unlike the far majority of my contemporaries who are fortunate enough and earned enormously large audiences, I've doubled down on being close to them instead of the reverse. You know, most of the people that have made it from a following standpoint either gave up on reading the comments when it got too much or never really did it in the first place. For me, it's how I got there. The, by the way, a lot of people don't know this. The real way the Gary Vee thing happened was when Twitter came out in two, and like started really hitting in 2007. I spent 10 hours a day on it talking to people every day. I actually spent four years straight not going to sleep until I replied to every tweet and every email I got from 2007 to 2011. So I, I got here this way and so now it's easy for me to keep a pulse on it because it's coming to me. For everyone who's trying to build it, I still think the way to do it is to join into the conversation. Meaning, I think too many people think they need to consume it without participating. So going on X slash Twitter, going into an Instagram post where there's content and then replying to three or four people that are replying to it, I don't think we network or engage or conversate enough. And now it's incredibly impossible because politics on both sides of the aisle both sell fear in different form and now everyone's scared to talk to everyone because everything and next year is gonna be a mess because everyone's gonna be on tilt because it's a presidential election and nobody wants to deal with all that negativity. You feel like you're not even sure you could say anything and it becomes something that people want to fight about and so it's really unfortunate. You're telling me that you've done 300 videos and they still only get 20 or 30 views? Yeah. A couple things. You've made enough content with not enough views where my normal talk of like you're being impatient goes out the window. Yeah. It's really tough to give this advice because it almost comes across as hurting one's feelings oh, but on the flip, I'm actually excited about it. You are very rare. You've gone hard enough, long enough, around a certain way that you've given me the opportunity to give rare advice, which is, hey, you can't do that shit no more. You have to completely switch it up. That has been proven to me with those numbers as it does not work. Don't dwell that that's happening, but you definitely need to mix something up with your content. You gotta try different shit. That doesn't need to be devastating, like, oh, if nobody likes me or I suck. That needs to be, how do I make different content? A lot of people doing really well. I mean, some people started out and you always say, if you got, you don't got money, but you got time. That's what you got. To you got to put the sweat equity in. But there's people in the room; they have money, and I, I'd like to hear about Team Gary Vee. Like, and a lot of people think, okay, to do this, because you say I went on TikTok, but part of the way you're doing that is because people are multiplying your content, your casting vision. Can you speak into maybe we, the Team Gary Vee is pretty advanced now? Yes. Can we start a little bit at the beginning as you think about those that would say, what am I? What about my first hires? How do I even do this? Hire right at real estate or financial services, but okay, how do I start, you know, every, where do I get my D-Rock? Where do I get the whole thing? Speak to early stages of building that team to help you grow with video. You need to hire people that do things that you don't want to do. Yes. Where do you find them? The internet. <laughs> People say things that drive me crazy because they don't want to do it. As if you can't find it. Are you telling me you're at this conference and you can't find people? You don't know what Fiverr is, you don't know how to post on LinkedIn, you don't know how to search terms on Twitter. Like, people come up with excuses. A lot of people, a lot of people don't grow because they want money to buy things. A lot of people's businesses don't grow because they want the business to give them money so they can get a Corvette or a second. This is back to you've got to find the thing you like. Because if you're building a brand or your thing to buy the yacht, you're not gonna build a very big thing. I'm just building the thing to build the thing. It's more interesting for me to build the thing than it is, it's like this. Some people love, actually here's a great comp. This, is, this blew my mind. One of the most stunning things that happened to me in my life. My whole life, I've wanted to be a professional athlete, right? So by fifth grade, I was like, fuck, I don't think I can play for the Jets. <laughs> These kids have gotten much bigger and stronger. In fact, I had such good hand-eye coordination that I was fucking killing people in first and second and third grade. 
but somewhere around like fifth grade, I'm like, why is everyone twice my size now? And so I was like, this might not be in the cards, and that's when I decided to buy the Jets. But I was like, fuck it. If I can't play for it, I'll just own the whole fucking thing. So now me and AJ get into the sports business and we have a big practice now and when I realized that a lot of kids play professional sports but they don't love the game, it was just their best way to monetize, that like blew my mind. And I mean really don't like it. And like even when we recruit kids now, I never want to recruit a kid that doesn't love the game. Because I don't think they're gonna be at the, you know, because we make our money on the second and third contract. There's kids that sign that first contract and it's a wrap. You want to know why people are out of the league in three, four years? Because they didn't give a fuck about the game. So for me, this thing that we're talking about, I don't want the things that come from being the best entrepreneur in the world. I just want to be the best entrepreneur in the world. So it goes to like, do you love it? Because if you don't, you can't get there. And so a lot of people don't have a DRock or a team because they don't want to spend the 53,000 on it because they want a burka bag and they want to go to Tahiti and they want a fucking Lambo. You're taking the money out of your business for your insecurities instead of feeding the business to win the fucking game. He's starting from zero uh, versus somebody that has resources or team or already started building an influence. You know, it's kind of one and the same. Like, it's kind of like back to something we talked about before, which is like making the best thing for the end audience. I have synthesized my thoughts into entertainment and education. That has become very clear to me that either you're doing entertainment or you're doing education and I actually do think that certain people like myself, when you're doing entertainment and education, you can really get crazy. Um, But that's what I would say. I would say to somebody with resources, a four person team, like look, forget about everything else because look, I did all all my content by myself for seven years. People forget that, like oh easy for you to say. I'm like "Mm." I'm like, you're not, you know, it's that iceberg. Yeah, I'm like you see me, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like you see me now. I think it's about are you putting out entertainment or are you putting out education? Because 90% of people are putting out selfish content. Yeah. 90% of people are putting out press releases. Yeah. They, want to, they want you to think something about them. They're making it selfish for themselves. They wanted to go to Maui and surf, so that's the content you're getting. But did that bring you any value? They want you to think they're cool. 90% of the content right now are people acting like PR agents of themselves I'm asking people to look like educators or entertainers. So I, I, I just started a brand new YouTube channel and it, it's like this, from the beginning, it's super, super, super difficult, like just breaking and making a name for yourself. I want as to it know should be. real talk though. Yes, yes, as it should be. But I want to know like real talk. Um, where do I, where should I go? Because I'm lucky enough where people in my life, people who surround me are all really supportive, but I need people who are truly, truly real, like give me critical, you know, like just constructive criticism to tell me what I'm doing right, wrong. Everyone's like, oh, that's cute. It's nice. Good for you. But I don't know if it's actually good because I just know these people. It's like basically my mom, right? You know, like telling me that they love me and it's good. This is, when it comes to YouTube, this is a really good question. Like we hear this a lot. And if you look at our channel, I didn't share that we had a YouTube channel with my coworkers, with my parents, with my family, until we hit 100,000 subscribers and we were in the news. Like, but we had like a bunch of different videos that we tried different things. We didn't think that we'd become like these huge YouTubers. But that's kind of a bit of advice that I have is that what I see a big problem that people do is that they will go and put a bunch of money behind a YouTube channel and they'll throw it out there to all of their Facebook friends and family. And then they'll go on and they'll give them artificial views and then they'll give them these positive comments. And then you start feeling like, oh, this is a really good idea. But even if all of your Facebook friends watched your video every single day for the entire week, you're not going to make any money off the channel. It's not going to grow that much. It really does take you have that global audience like try the, the beauty about not telling everybody about what you're doing on your YouTube channel until you find an idea like ours was cutting stuff open. That's what took. But some of the other ideas, we just made them the videos private. The beauty of that is that you have the whole world that can look at your channel and they can give you feedback. And sometimes they're pretty they're, they're always honest, like they're brutally honest. And that way you don't live off of like, oh, my mom said it's good or my family said it's good. You can find an idea and then finally find what works and what your niche is on YouTube and then go all in. Hide everything else, create a new brand and just go for it. Attention. Attention will get you everything you want. You wanna sell a course? Attention. You wanna sell a t-shirt? Attention. You wanna be the mayor of this town? Attention. 
You wanna raise some money for your nonprofit because you're passionate about it? Attention. You wanna be an actor? Attention. Attention. It is the only asset that everyone in here must chase to produce what they want. Being unemotional about where the attention is is very important. Too many of you have demonized platforms out of your subjective opinion. A bad experience. And we must get over that hump. Once you get over the hump, once you sit in this room and understand that everything you want to happen is about building brand and sales in social networks, then you start having to get good at it. Right? It's like health and fitness. I can tell you the way to get healthier is to eat better and go to the gym. And once you understand that, that there's no magic pill, then you can do it. How many people here make YouTube shorts every day? Raise your hand. Four. Let me explain to you why this is a major opportunity. Unlike Instagram Reels, unlike TikTok, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. That YouTube short can live for a very long time. When you name the video, you think about naming it for people that are searching. Just taking the video that you're doing on Instagram and TikTok, bringing it over to YouTube short, and just naming it smartly from a search perspective will disproportionately grow the opportunity of your awareness and branding.